Hi y'all, welcome to another moment of peace where I don't really do any turning but I sit and, and uh, make a few comments about wood turning and respond to comments that viewers have had. Uh, let me start off by first giving a sincere thank you for all you subscribers out there that helped push me past the 7,000 mark. Uh, I really I really do appreciate that. I'll never catch up with Carl Jacobson, but that's okay. I, but it is gratifying to see the subscriber list uh, uh, growing. Um, let's talk about feedback. For me, to get a better feel for where you guys are uh, are with your wood turning experience, I'd like you to click the little little interest button up here and respond to the poll. Let me know what your primary wood turning uh, project level interests are. Uh, is your project uh, project content you're primarily interested in at a beginner level, an intermediate level, or an advanced level? And just click on that poll and, and anybody uh, will be able to see the results. I'm always interested in, in what kind of projects or techniques you're interested in, in showing and I appreciate y'all's uh, suggestions. Uh, one viewer commented they, they weren't real excited about the music I had when I did fast forward so I thought okay well let's do a little opinion poll since that was a new feature that I was playing with on on YouTube and I found out 82 percent of you uh, were fine with the music 18 percent said said ditch it so uh, about every fifth video where I've got where I fast forward maybe I'll skip the music following comment is from Ed Bacote, uh and that's not his real name but his uh, nom de plume or his YouTube name uh, and this was in response to uh, my blooper video where I dealt with uh, double stick tape and having a problem with it. He says, nice job, uh, I have a suggestion for you. When you turn things as a spalted disc, to remove them from your two-way tape without breaking them, cut a little table saw cut in the face of the glue block so you can stick an Allen wrench or finishing nail in whatever will fit behind the groove and gently encourage it to let go. Uh, and also, of course, beware of the grain orientation. So what, what he's saying is when you have a glue block like this, you cut a little slit. I did this one on a band saw, but a table saw worked fine. You have your double stick uh, tape on here. You've got an item double stick stuck to it like this. Well, then you have a little tiny Allen wrench or finishing nail that will fit. See if you can see that little slot that I've cut like that and then you just kind of lift up and it'll give you a pressure point and just gradually uh, uh, put that pressure on there and and off it'll come. So that was a nice little uh, nice tip Ed. Second tip from Ed which I thought was uh, uh, also an excellent one is on the spatula video where I made the uh, spatula sand, sander, the round drum sander uh, on my lathe I staple these, uh, which makes it tough to sand near the staples, and he suggested you use double stick tape. And it's like, duh, I should have thought of that. That's a great, great suggestion, Ed, and I, I, I appreciate you submitting that. Okay, I had a lot of, a lot of interest in, in my dust collection system and a, lot, and a lot of comments, and I appreciate that. And, and let me respond uh, to the main one. There seems to be this concern because people have read it on the Internet, and somewhere and it's it's become an urban myth and that's the risk of using PVC uh, pipe because it's going to cause an explosion uh, or you know in, or burn down your shop. Uh, I meant to have that in my, I had that in my script and I didn't read it carefully my approach to that. I don't believe that. I do believe it's an urban myth. Uh, I know several of y'all uh, commented uh, thanks to Joseph Scarborough, who uh, provided a very specific reference, and I'd forgotten about this reference. I've read it years ago, uh, and I will put that in the um, in the description to that video. I'll edit that so any of y'all can read it. But it was grounding PVC and other dust collection myths by Dr. Rod Cole. Uh, I would suggest any of y'all that have concerns read that article. If you still have concerns, of course, do what you want with your own PVC pipe, but. But I think it's a it's a needless needless concern. Here's another comment from Tom Palmer. It says, "Nice to look at your dust collection system." And a thought occurred to me, uh, to me that the jet air filter uh, was it any better than a window air conditioner? I don't have either in my shop in the basement of my house, and I do have air and heat ducts run. Perhaps I should reconfigure, or perhaps I should install the cold air return here as well. Uh, regarding the 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 comparison between a a window air conditioning unit and a dust collector there there is no comparison and, and let me show you 
what's inside uh, my uh, my dust collector or my air filtration unit, so you can you can see what I'm I'm talking about. And I do have an, a cold air return in my shop. It's not an effective way to filter d dust, but it does keep some of the dust out of my uh, uh, from hitting the, the my uh, air conditioning heating heating unit in the basement. And I'll show you that that in just a moment. My basement unit uh, has two major cold air returns. It's got one in a large room behind here, but it also has this one in the shop because the uh, uh, my air conditioner guy said uh, it really for the for this unit to be effective, it really needed one in here. So let me show you, you know, what he wound up doing. I did have concerns about about pulling uh, dust in, uh, but here's. Here's what we've got. In the wall we have a, a 14 by 14 air filter and that helps, it's a secondary filter, it's just one more filter that, that keeps some of this dust from going into the actual uh, heating cooling unit further on that does have another filter. I can see this, I can tell it's dirty, time for me to change it, so appreciate that timely uh, question. This jet air filtration unit has a, starts with a uh, I don't know what you call this a primary or secondary filter, but this one, you, you can get disposable filters, but this one you can actually blow out and clean and reuse, so I do that periodically. Uh, but the thing I want to really show you is the inside filter of this thing, which is this, this bag, which is really what really does the work. And I'm going to take this outside and shake it a little bit and then blow it out. I blow it out, being careful not to get too much pressure too close. I think you can tell just how, how uh, dusty this thing really is, so I'm going to blow it out and we're going to see some dust fly. Thank y'all for the cons safety concerns and the, su and the suggestions on my Lichtenberg uh, wood burning unit. Uh, when I was using that unit, I was using a pair of high voltage uh, tested gloves with its leather sh uh, shell. So uh, even if my probes weren't the best, uh, th these, these certainly I think would have protected me. I've actually ordered some of these myself. I bought these from an electrical engineer uh, in the neighborhood and actually loaned them to me. He didn't want me to do it. it do that thing without it. Uh, I've ordered some of these uh, uh, rubber gloves and I'll feature those when I when I do the video on actually how to make one and safely use it.